the Joe Rogan experience. The wildest one is religion. Go on. That they're tax free. Oh. The amount of money Impossible. a guy like, like Joel Osteen is raking in tax free. Does yeah. he have to pay any taxes? Does he have to personally pay taxes? How does that work? If the I religion actually have is no idea. Exempt, find out I if that's true. I believe that your limited salary if you if the if your church is incorporated. But having churches pay no taxes is wild. But that speaks to stability where it's like it's the it's cahoots stability it's yeah. like the the bill of rights and the ten commandments <laughs> it, they're not exactly one to one but it's all kind of the there's no coincidence there where yeah. it's like everything that they it's another wing of the it's a i've i used to refer to god as super cup the... like we can't be yeah. there but you shall not steal you shall not even if there's no right. cameras don't steal, right, but don't the murder, don't. Thing is nuts because Scientology got it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they they sued, they sued the federal government and they got tax exempt status, and uh, you know, that's wild because you know the guy who wrote it, <laughs> like he, this yeah. is one specific guy who is the not just the most he's the most prolific author in human history. Mm -hmm. You know that he published more yeah. works of fiction. But not that. That was all real. No, no, that no. I mean, that, that's look, all real. guys got to take the day off. And they get no taxes. It's pretty wild. I mean, if you're like a small Lutheran church and you, you know, you serve the community and you put on charities and do a bunch of great things and you're like a real asset yeah. to the community. There's a lot of those churches and they should be tax exempt. I don't, other than like the Sea Org slave shit, I don't care about Scientology. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. I don't think that they're, they charge for classes. I don't know. They, they kind of make you give them a tithe at churches seems like it's working out for tom cruise it's working out for a lot of them seems so like it's really working out. that's why i'm saying like i don't care just don't put people's don't slave people yeah, don't do that don't kidnap kelly miscavige and all that yeah, shit but like the rest of it i don't care about the rest right. of it's not any different to me than any other religion it seems like it's real similar to what goes on in a lot of religions in a sense because there's a lot of religions that force people to work as missionaries and there's a lot of religions that you know ask things of people and you have to tithe 10 mm -hmm. percent and, and have kids and yes. don't use birth control oh, i'm yes. like that's pretty significant yeah, it's very significant yeah yeah and Punish there's a, gay people yeah yeah there's a lot of weird stuff in religions that we just accept you yeah. Know, but didn't you say that, um, I think you said this, that when you had a psychedelic experience, you kind of stopped being an atheist? Yeah, I was, I was an atheist. And then ayahuasca journey number four. No, journey number three. Oh, I'm in the presence of God. Mm. I'm just in it now. And it's not, They. I mean, again, this is what I experienced, so it's not true or false, but um, it's a that's a central creation force that I experienced. There was, you know, it didn't say, it didn't have any rules or laws or. Did you get a sense of what this whole thing is supposed to be? Like, what are we doing? Like, if if there's a central creation force and you interact with it, like, what is it, what does it want? What it, does it want from us? And what is it doing with like life? I my experience. This was from the Bufo, not ayahuasca, which I is amazing. Bufo was just too rough for me. Uh, I I was drowning on incomprehensibility. I don't think it's comprehensible mm. what the purpose is. My that's my experience. I don't. I didn't even get love from it. Mm. I didn't get hate. I didn't get venom. Yeah, I just got indifference. I just, just got like super powerful, just power force. Yeah, just force. It felt magnetic in a weird way. So is Bufo 5-methoxy? Is it yeah, five it's 5 it's, uh, f Yeah, 5 meo yeah. Yeah. That is a very different feeling. That's a very different uh, experience. That, that, that one, I really thought I was gone. I thought I, I died. I mean, it, dude, I didn't... Even when I was here last time, I wasn't totally yeah. recovered. I feel like there's some sort of trend um, in life and in, in, in the cosmos of things getting more complex and you know i'm not the first person to ever point this out either um but with human beings in particular everything is about technological innovation and things becoming more and more complex and information being more and more accessible and being more and more connected with each other it seems like a really really obvious trend 
And if you play that trend out, you know, a thousand years, a hundred thousand years, a million years, like where, where is that going? And is that going on all over the universe? And is that what God's doing? Is God all about this constant state of improvement that it goes on forever until you reach like literally like a God-like being? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing with, with, uh, I uh, I had a few kind of rapture experience like ish rapture ish. I just get the feeling that if if like when if there was a rapture or whatever, I just think people would go, "Wow, this was we fucking were really worried about the wrong shit." <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like beyond even our comprehend like beyond our be so far past what we were like not even worried about uh fucking or war or any of that stuff it's like dude it's just about this energy yeah field that i couldn't make heads or tails of in terms of like we're supposed to well if you think of amoebas if you think of single-celled organisms they eventually become multi-celled organisms they they develop the ability to move around and they, they come on shore, and they evolve and change, and this goes on forever and ever and ever. And then one day in 2022, they're us. That's what we are. We're the most advanced form that we're aware of, of that thing. Mm -hmm. If that keeps going, maybe that is what creates the universe itself. Maybe the universe is making itself through us. We're just in this amoeba stage, and we can't even comprehend it. To us, it's like, what are you talking about? We're going to change the world? Like, imagine an amoeba being born in the bottom of a volcano silo, you know, in the bottom of the ocean. Some I little, felt like an amoeba on, on 5 MEO. Yeah, well, you basically probably are. I think we probably all are a version of that in comparison to this ultimate thing that we're going to become. If, if we do keep evolving, if, if evolution is a real thing, and it did go from single-celled organisms to what we see now in human beings, if you just keep going, that should, that should get to some place of impossible energy and power and maybe the universe itself like maybe that's what it's made out of maybe that's how we make things like stars and, and maybe the universe itself is born out of this and we're just this really tiny stage this amoeba like stage that will ultimately become the god force of the universe maybe that's our ultimate transition between a physical being into this thing of energy and love and light and power and and in, in indifference in many ways to our own plights because it's it's necessary to achieve this purpose like all of our bullshit and maybe all of our struggles and maybe all of our debates about things and trying to figure out what's white and what's wrong and whose philosophy is correct and whose behavior is correct maybe all of that is just trying to get us to that ultimate stage where we're going to be. And that's what happens everywhere in the universe. That's the universe creating itself everywhere, all over the place. When things get, and they have a certain amount of troubles that they have to deal with, whether it's tribal invasions or super volcanoes, and s figure it out, get to a point where you can become the next thing. And yeah. Then, and then I mean, on and on and yeah. on and on and on forever. Yeah. I mean, that's, I would, it, my, Especially my Emmy, my five MEO experience was about having no sense of order whatsoever. Mm. Meaning, I was an amoeba. I didn't know what breathing was. I didn't know what direction was. I didn't know what sight was. I didn't know fucking anything. Yeah. And I was str I was drowning on. I don't know any. I don't know what a thought is. It was really incredibly difficult. Like it's hard That's beyond. Hard and so. That's what I've come away from. One of the things I've come away with, from it with is is this sense of like we're just trying to order things more than anything. Like that's our number one sort of human priority because it's like the best way to survive. Yeah. And I feel like we're ordering for the wrong stuff a lot of the time, but it's inevitable. 